There we go. All right. Let's try again. We'll share the screen and we'll get started. All right. So, um, so the first thing, uh, I just want to check everyone be able to create your Mer Merlot profiles. Yes. Yes. Maggie, are you able to get yeah. yours done? All right, Alice. And did you add a few other things, yeah. Lydia? No. All right. All right. Um, anybody, um, any questions about that? Getting your Merlot profile flushed out? Uh, so we're going to add materials and uh and j just the again the context here is we've talked a lot about this so since you're becoming a librarian we're going to look at finding materials cataloging materials to build your own personal collections you can comment and curate and then think about creating your own digital library so um so that's what I i'm going to show you today some basic steps. And again, um, just remind you that uh, we built a little website for you um, that um, um, that has tutorials about a lot of these things. And um, so if you need any um, uh, help, um, for some reason, the pick today, my uh, internet provider has been having challenges, so my, my network's a little slow, so I apologize. All right, so um, here we are uh, at Merlot.org, and, um, uh, and the first thing for you to contribute into the Merlot collection, you have to be a member, right? So make sure you log in um into merlot and then you go over here to add materials right so you just click on this so add a material to merlot and then it opens up a pretty simple form right and um and and something like this um you know if once you find a website and and we'll be going through that in a little bit um you know i might do um uh, type in something HTTP S colon um, slash slash skills commons. Oh, I'll do this one. I'll do, let's see, support dot skills commons dot org. Right. And then once I hit the return and I can go to now notice it's saying check in the URL and it says, oh, um, we've seen part of the URL and part of something else, right? So um, this lets you check, and I think it was Alice asked last time, what happens if a duplicate? So you can see it looks for a similar URL, but in this case, it th this is different. So we're gonna say continue with submission. So now you, you, you'll be able to submit that. Um, and now, you know, th th then you can just say, uh, put the title in and, and you can put a title in that you think is descriptive of the website. Sometimes you use the title that's actually there. So, you, you know, in this case, I'll just say, this is the uh, support uh, center for the skills commons open library. Right, so I put a title in, right? Now, remember when last time, yesterday, when we were looking at how do you add yourself into, um, you know, catalog you in your discipline? Well, guess what? Now you're gonna use that same process for cataloging materials. So 
Skills Commons is in the area of workforce development. So I would click on that. And then I can say, oh, what's the subdiscipline? And um, I might say, oh, this is about, um, let's say, uh, industrial or career technical education. So I can click on that. And now I have um, information of, that's cataloged or categorized the materials. And remember, I can always add another one. So I can say, oh, this is in workforce development. And now it's also something related to, um, there's a lot of stuff in manufacturing. So I can click on that. All right. So, so you can see here, first you catalog it. And then next, you put in a description of whatever you want here. And what, what I want to emphasize here, folks, think about what you are doing when you're putting it, you're just putting a description or an abstract. You are, you want to communicate to someone who is looking for materials, right? So um, having a description of what's the content area. Oh, um, uh, you can also talk about what type of materials are there videos in it? Is it a database? Um, uh, is it a fully online courses? You can put some descriptives in there. You can also um, talk about how useful it is. You know, it could be this was really helpful in learning about X, Y, Z, right? So your description here is your ability to communicate with potential users. And a lot of times what you can do is you can go to a website and uh, cut and paste sections because they tell their story about what it is. Then you can have adding uh, keywords and I can say this is for um, workforce development, right? So I can add that and then I can add things about online education. I can add that, right? So you can add a bunch of keywords. You can pick a, a, um, a graphic. Oh, I think I'd like to use this one. Um, then uh, then th this next part is for you uh, deciding um, what type of material that, that, that's here. So when you're looking throughout the, the internet, you're gonna see a whole variety of materials. Sometimes there are animations that are trying to ill Sometimes there are animations that illustrate a biological function. Some of those are really cool, right? Or there might be um, a whole online course about something <clears throat> or, uh, some of you talked about um, a, a journal article that's out there, or there's a simulation, or it could just be a tutorial about how to do something, right? So all these all these materials, um, you can put it in. So Skills Commons, uh, what that is, that's actually a repository of materials um, that 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 are kind of available here. So you have a learning object repository. So I'd click on that. Um, what the audience is, right? This could be a lower division college and it could be professional. The languages, it's in English. And then here um, is where you look at who authored the material. So, um, you know, in, in this case, um, I'm just going to put myself as the author, just make it easy. But this is where you you can look at um, uh, the website and and you have to be sometimes a little bit of a detective. Uh, some websites, for example, like the National Institute of Health. So what you can do here is uh, you can just pin as their last name. All right, uh, you know, the, the name of the, the organization, there, there's often some email, um, uh, you know, contact us. And so you can put that. 
and then and then here the organization you can again put National Institute of of, um, of Health there. So so these are sometimes you, you don't have all the information about an individual person, but you can kind of fill in as best you can. Technical format you're going to be looking at websites typically, uh, but sometimes you might have. Uh, there might be a podcast or something like that, or zip files, video, et cetera. Um, technical requirements. Um, usually you just leave this blank because if you have a browser, there's not really many technical requirements. Um, some people have cataloged apps to do something. And, um, uh, and then these questions down here, um, so source available, which really means, do you have access to the source of the software code? And typically you don't have access to the software code. Um, uh, sometimes you're able to download the materials. So if that's the case, um, you can put yes, so I can actually make it available, but typically it's no. Most of the stuff you're going to find is going to be no cost. Um, you know, no, the source isn't available. And then the other aspect here is around, has to do with, is there any information about how a website is um, accessible to people with disabilities? And I'll just, you know, uh, point out, um, when you're looking at um, uh, in uh, within Merlot, for example, in the footer here, and this is where many of the websites have in the footer, they'll have some information about accessibility. And so, you know, when you open this up, here's our accessibility statement. Here's the various features that we have. Um, more information about any gaps links to materials, et cetera. So in this case, when, when we look at this, um, we can say, uh, yes, um, you know, the site has accessibility um, information here. All right, so let me just go back. All right, oh, shoot, I hit too many buttons. Sorry about that, crap, all right. All right, so we'll, we'll just, so uh, we're down accessibility. So I said, yep, there's some accessibility materials. And then Creative Commons license. If you remember, um, remember we talked about um, the attribution license, the CC. So you just look for that. If it doesn't have it, you just click on no, and then you submit. So the process of cataloging material is pretty straightforward. And um, and just so you know, if you put in, in the information that you can, and then um, what, what, what you wanna do um, is, um, um, is uh, uh, you can go back and, and uh, edit things later on, because what will show up for you, once you contribute materials in your profile, you'll have all the materials that you submitted. All right. And so that, then I can say, oh, what if I want to um, change this? Right, I can um, go here. And then I can go edit the material. Okay. So you can do the best you can, put it together. Then if you have questions, you know, you can shoot me an email. What about this? What about that? And, and you're able to ed edit your the material that you contributed. All right. So hopefully that's a quick run through about how you catalog materials and the first time you do it it's going to take you a little while the second time you do it it gets a little easier 
And I think I told you this saying already is all things are difficult until they become easy. All right. So the first time you do it, it's going to, ah, what do I do here? What am I there? And it went with practice. And that's why internships are so important is that you get practice doing things, learning things. And then when it comes down to when you have to do it for real, when you go to college, um, when you go to a graduate program, when you get a job, then you already have the skills developed. All right. So let me pause here before I turn it over to Anil to show you some websites. Um, and, and then I'll, I'll show you some stuff as well. But um, do you have any questions about how to complete the forms? And, and I'll, I'll check with each of you. Alice, does it seem pretty straightforward or do you have any questions? You're good? Okay, George? I'm good. You're good? Okay. Alexander? Uh, it seems straightforward to me. Thank you. Okay, good. Lydia? It seems straightforward to me. All right, Maggie? Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. Uh, Oli? Yeah, I'm good. You're good. And Naomi? I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Now, what? Why? Why do you think I asked each individual person whether you're you're good or not doing this? Because everyone needs to add materials, maybe. Right. So, what's what's the requirement for the internship? You got to put in at least forty materials, and if you don't know how to do that, then you're going to have some problems finishing the internship, right? So, so that's why, just you know. And, and here, what, what I'd say is try things out early because you don't, listen, I'm a great procrastinator. And in fact, my advisor gave me this advice. She said, Jerry, don't do anything today that you can put off until tomorrow, right? So I, I've, I've really kind of become very good at that. But the problem is if you wait too long, you get in trouble, right? So Now's the time to try, try it out, make sure you're familiar with it and you can do something so that by the, by the end of the month, you'll be done. And for those people who are doing this, the uh, 75 hours, right? That means you're going to be doing it even more. So, so if you, let's say you're going to put 60 materials in, I'm just making up a number right now, then <clears throat> if, if it takes you, you know, if you get good at it, it might take you 15 minutes to do each one. But if you're struggling and it takes you an hour, right, 60 things, and you're waiting, you know, for the last two days to do it, you're going to, you won't, you won't get it done, right? So we, we've all, many of you might have been there before when you just run out of time. So that's why I'm checking with you now and practice it. And if you have questions, um, you can always email Cushy. And you can email myself around, oh, I'm having a problem. Um, and if you do, send me the URL of the materials you're contributing so I can take a look at it. Um, or I can just go to your member profile and see what you have too. Okay? All right. Okay, with that, um, I'm going to pass it over to Anil, um, who will uh, talk to you about uh, the NIH website, which is a wonderful resource for so many things. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, thanks. It's nice to be here with, with all of you. Uh, the, there are a couple of things that I want to say about NIH uh, website. Uh, unlike most other website, institutional website, and thing, the purpose of NIH website is not uh, administrative. It is where it is. It's a learning site that they're trying to get as much knowledge or as much material across, so that everybody can uh, deal with diseases and what affects them. So that is one part which is a very important. So it's a very content-rich site, and if you really search it, the second part uh, is anything that is there on the NIH website is 
is available for you to repurpose. So if you wanted to say, okay, I'm going to take uh, videos from NIH website and put it on Merlot, it is free content, you know, it, as long as you say it came from NIH. So that is a very huge resource that is there. And I've been sort of, you know, working with NIH or work, you know, working from outside with NIH, and I still haven't been able to come, say I, I know all about it. I mean, because they're, they're, they're really, they're putting a lot of material. So there is a need to really search. it. Now, let me try to, I prepared a list which I've sent to all of you. And um, uh, so let me see if I can share it on the screen. Uh, uh, why am I not able to get my... screen let's see says please please grant browser access to screen recording Jerry any anybody knows anything about it? You muted. Uh, yes, and there must be a prompt uh, coming out to give you the uh, to give the access to the browser uh, to share the screen while the call is getting recorded. Uh, Are you using yeah. a different browser? It's sort of uh, okay. Is my screen is visible? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it is visible. Okay. Uh, now, if you go to the first one, uh, the National Institutes of Health, uh, will you click on it, Kushi? Yes. Yeah, so she... All of them have the URL behind it, so you don't have to do this. If you click on the National Institutes of Health, it should it open. It's not getting it directly. Oh. That's very funny. Anyway, so go through the, uh, I'm glad that I put the URL there. Yes. Yeah. So, so this is the, uh, the primary website and all of you should go there because you'll find a lot of things if you go to any of those health information, research and training institutes at uh, NIH. So, uh, so go to the next one, which is the, uh, 27 institutes and centers at NIH, third one. There's a video oh. tour, which you can take it later on, but uh, see, uh, go to this one. Yes. There are 27 institutes. Uh, here's a list, if you can see on the right side. And if you just scroll down, Kushi, I will encourage you, each one of you to go there and, you know, when you go to the Word document that I've sent to you and click on it and you've got the URL, you can see each of those institutes without a problem. Uh, the biggest institute there is the National Cancer Institute. But uh, for the moment, let us first go to the National Library of Medicine. Kushi, can you go there? Just looking. Yes, this one? Yeah. Yeah. So the National Library of Medicine is one of the richest resource on medicine and life sciences anywhere in the world. You know, and this is in your neighborhood. Unfortunately, the building is being redone, so you don't have access, direct access to the library, but you can write to the library and you'll find a lot of information and they are very willing to provide you the information. So now if you go to PubMed, uh, go to click on the uh, left uh, box, and the PubMed box, yeah. Now you can type anything you want, you know, in, in this. Uh, type any, uh, say, pe uh, pediatric cancer. Yeah. 
you'll get all the literature that is on the pediatric cancer coming down. Now. If you roll, uh, scroll up, Kushi, if you can go up, you'll see the number of items that they found, if most probably, uh, yeah, 17,601 items that they found on pediatric cancer. And this is one of the richest open database of literature on medical research. So I would encourage you to play around with it, find documents, read it, and you you would uh, most of them are full text documents, so you'll be able to learn a lot. I mean, beside what we're doing in the summer internship to expand your knowledge, this is across all diseases. It's not just uh, cancer or anything else. Now, if you go down, for, go back to the NLM uh, website, Kushi. Okay. This one, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, and pub and we uh, go down to mesh. Go down to mesh. Since you all have the list, I'm not going one by one. I was hoping to do it there, so you can always go back. So when you go to go to, on top, go on top, go up. No, this is not the. No. This you one. Know the, yeah, this one is mesh, medical yeah. subject headings, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so there you'll find a lot of terms. And one of the tricks of search, searching anything on the uh, on the computer especially, it is getting better, but to find the precise term. So, so if you come up with something and you say, okay, what is the equivalent in mesh? So I would encourage all of you to sort of, you know, visit the mesh uh, website, the medical subject heading website, and find the exact word term that will fit into what you're going to be asking. Sometimes that makes a lot of difference to get, uh, you know, access to more important, uh, you know, documents. Sometimes it skips because you might be, you, I mean, you know, you might be calling something which is not an exact term. So it always helps. And that way also is a good learning device to look into the medical search thing. Okay, uh, go to the NLM data set. There's a virtual tour. Do it at your leisure. And, you know, it's there and the thing is worthwhile. Go to the NLM data set catalog, Kushi. Is it in this website, on this website? It, or? No, no, no. It is in the list, Kushi. If okay. you go down the list, you say NLM data set catalog. Yeah. This one, right? You got to the center, so no, it was the same point. This is yeah, yeah. Uh, spend some time on this, uh, all of you, uh, because there this is a beta site, but they have got uh, data sets uh, on the research in various areas on the side and they are encouraging you to work and play with them. So, uh, so uh, scroll up a little, Kushi. So uh, they will allow you to put the data set into, into your area and work with it or do and run analysis on it. And it is, it, it is worthwhile looking into it from your point. And maybe those of you are research oriented and I don't know what Jerry's view would be, that maybe some of these data sets which are interesting could also be listed on your Merlot pay, Merlot collection, your uh, repository. And maybe uh, Jerry might have to create a category on open data sets or something like that, or data sets. I, I mean, I'll let him decide on that. Go to the next one, data science. Uh, this is uh, something very interesting. Uh, it is literally, uh, you know, what we say in English, uh, we say the dog, wa uh, the tail wagging the dog. So about five years back, if you went to NIH and talked about data 
and computer, they will sort of say, oh, don't worry, don't bother us about data and computer, go to a National Science Foundation to do it. But actually, uh, if you go to this, um, uh, go to the site, uh, uh, you know, go say about, go to about. So there is a whole data management policy as of last year, where the, the NIH is saying that any research funded by NIH would be, uh, should be available to within about six months of the time, should be available to any other researcher. All the data and everything else should be available for further research. Now, so it, go through it. Uh, again, it'll give you a very good idea of, of the approach that's happening. And data science has become a major, major thing at NIH. And remember, keep, keep in mind that NIH funds almost $30 billion, 30 billion, not million, dollars every year, including in the year that Trump was president. I mean, so it didn't cut back on that. So uh, $30 billion goes down to all these universities and everywhere that you're going. So whosoever, when you apply to the university, your knowledge of NIH and, and, and the knowledge that is contained on NIH website will be a qualification. Because one of the things as an undergrad student in any of the universities, you're expected to help with the grant applications to be finding it. And, you know, now go to the next one, high school summer internship program. This one? It, it can work also on this one. Do, um, uh, they have the list, so that's okay. So mm -hmm. you'll find that you are able to, they welcome some, uh, in uh, high school students as interns and for both for the high school summer internship, which is the pr previous one, but academic internship program. And if you go through it, they will tell you how to approach it. So, so there is a tremendous amount of, uh, what should I say, uh, interest in what, they, what NIH calls young scientists, people like you, who are about to embark on a career in life sciences. So go through it. Uh, I mean, you know, this summer internship may be too late, but but definitely the academic internship program is open, and and you know you go through it carefully. And if you have any questions uh, or any contact or any net network you need to do, do reach out to us, and we'll find you a contact. Uh, the NIH is very welcoming to young scientists and it's including high school students. I mean, you know, a lot of people don't go to NIH because they think, oh, this is PhDs. No, they're very interested in you who want to start a career. Okay, then go to the next one, the uh, grants and funding. This one. Yeah. This one? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Just, uh, again, as I said, NIH gives out uh, uh, $30 billion a year through a process, a grants and funding process, which is very transparent. And it is very, it is very important for you to look at this process requirement, and it's described very well there. And, uh, and you're, you're getting your awareness of the grants and funding process, again, will be a qualification into a higher study, you know, because they, they, all the academic institutions want the students and faculty to work on sourcing grants in life sciences, for example, here uh, to fund their work, you know. So very carefully go through it. it, it do, don't get bored with it. It is, it is worth, uh, worth spending time on it. Finding material, for example, if you were to find a material on the, and put it on Merlot and the granted funding, NIH granted funding site, and somebody comes to Merlot who's looking at pediatric oncology and can go into this, that connection would be very useful to not only you, but the people all over the place. And one of the things to remember, Merlot is a global, um, uh, global repository. 
people from India, people from Africa, people from China, all over the world have access to it. And, uh, you know, as uh, I'm sure Jerry has talked about it. But also what is very interesting is NIH does not distinguish from a geographical point, to discriminate from a geographical point of view. So if there's a good scientific proposal from Nepal or Bhutan, they will, it is eligible for grant. And almost, uh, I believe that almost 8% of NIH grants, that is 8% of 30 billion, are uh, open to going abroad. So uh, look at it. It's important, uh, you know, uh, the, to look at it, uh, whatever your interest might be and, and look at the process. And one of the things I, I keep on saying to everybody that NIH grant process is very, very transparent and open. I mean, they do, they welcome young researchers, uh, young scientists, they work on people who have not got the grant before. They have a whole lot of fellowship program. So do explore it because if you're going into life sciences, if you carry a, this is one of the best resources to go to. to go to the next one, NIH reporter. Yeah. This one? No, not this one. Uh, that was before. Uh, Report.nih.gov. This one. Yes. Every single penny that has been given by NIH to anybody is recorded here. So this is a very, uh, this will give you a view. If you search through it, you'll get a view of uh, all the people working in the particular field. Who are, who are the university? You might be applying to a university and you can ch check by the name of the university. Just, just uh, uh, go into Matchmaker. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so you can find uh, what is being funded, what is of interest. But it, it, there is somewhere here that you can actually suppose you're going to Arizona State University. And uh, just in the, in the search thing, just say Arizona State University. <laughs> Nothing good. No, no, it's not possible. No, yes, yes, yes. There's a lot come. Yeah. Now, if you're applying to Arizona State University, uh -huh. and if you went to this website, you'll be able to find out what are their interests, who are the professors working on it. Is this uh, Rana M. Meyer is the person you want to work with or Carrie O'Hara, whatever it is. Or, uh, you know, so you can actually uh, formulate, I mean, you could target your application to that, uh, to that particular person. Now, th there, are, there are also two universities. One is Arizona State University and the other is University of Arizona both come up here. So, again, and you know exactly what kind of amount of money they got in which year, you know. So this is a very, very reporter, is a repo uh, NI reporter is a very useful tool for you to target where you want to do higher studies. So I know it, it looks very boring, but it is a very, very useful tool on that. Now, uh, uh, so is there something else on the list, uh, Kush? This is the last one. Last one. OK. Yeah. So any questions? I'd really rather answer something. Okay. All right. So did uh, that was an excellent tour of a set of outstanding resources. How many people have seen NIH materials before? Anybody? George? Great. 
And George, did you learn a little something extra today? Yeah, I had only seen the National Library of Medicine and the Cancer Institute before, and none of the other things you went over. Right, and and one of the things you remember, it, you know, I said, okay, when you go searching, you have to think of yourself, the persona that that you are going to be searching for, because. If you just have a, you say, oh, I'm going to look for anything, then then you just have a pile of lots of stuff that isn't very coherent. But if you are a, if you say, you know what, I'm a, I want to find materials relevant for our young emerging uh, researcher in uh, pediatric cancer. Um, we'll just use that as an example. Then if you're going to be a researcher, you want to find what's the latest research. So you have the library there. Then you have to say, oh, what's the latest grants that are out there where if I'm, I might want to apply for, um, you know, go to school there where I can then work with the latest people, right? And then say, well, if they're, if they have a grant already, well, how do they continue to get grants? Because you're, you know, you're going to want funding to support your research position, right? So all these elements, I think, what Anil has has shown you is that knowing stuff is not enough. What you need to know also is how do you do the research? What are the re resources out there? And by looking at other grants, you can look at all the research methodologies that people are doing there. So it's a wonderful way to really expand your understanding of what it means to be, you know, a researcher uh, on topics. And as, as Neil said, that are broadly related to health there. So Anil, you have your hand up? Yeah. Uh, I wanted to say, uh, Kushi, can you bring up something called ned.nih.gov? While Kushi is trying to bring up that site, uh, is my screen uh, is visible? Uh, getting to be visible. Yeah. What is the yeah. site, Anil? Please N repeat. N E D. N E D. Dot N I H. Dot N I H. Dot gov. Dot gov. Right. Yeah. The, this indicates for, and when you see the site, this indicates. For, for, it's one of the most valuable resources. So you might find in a paper or research or project that there's somebody who's of interest. And, you know, that. Uh, so you put the person's last name here and the first name here. So, Kushi, let's put uh, Buxbaum, B U C H S, B U C H S, B A U M. And. Uh, put J here and say find. Now, if you click on this, on his name in the left hand, hand corner, click on it. Nothing is getting. Oh, that's very funny. It should be able to do that. Double click it on it. No. Nope. It is something to do with the screen. It is getting display. load. It is no. It is getting load. My internet is slow. I think. Okay. Yeah. It's, see, it's there now. See, you get his, you get his all uh, his email address. You get what is his uh, location, what is his work phone number. So what I'm sort of trying to why I wanted to see you to show you find some paper or something which is of interest or somebody in National Library of Medicine that you want to get in touch with. And this is a public directory that is available to you to go and you write to, you write to Jeff, say, Jeff, dear Dr. Buxbaum, I want to talk to you about pediatric oncology because I saw your paper. And my experience has been all, I mean, for, uh, from, from the beginning, even when I, I didn't know them, that people responded back to you. They would say, you'll find an email saying, yes, Alice, here's a paper or let's meet. And you people are very lucky that you are in that area 
So it is, you know, it's uh, NCI is in Rockwell. Um, the rest of NIH mostly is in Rockwell or in uh, Bethesda. Um, in fact, in, uh, if you go to a hospital center by Metro uh, and you just go up, you go to the National Library and the NIH campus. So I would very much encourage you to connect with those people that you find interesting. And I know that they will wel welcome that you're connecting to them. And uh, and uh, you so don't hesitate. I mean, you don't sort of sit back and say, okay. Uh, I mean, even a Nobel laureate in NIH will reply to your email. And there are quite a few of them there. So do do reach out to them. Net.nih.gov is a, uh, is a directory, open public directory. I've not shared with you anything which is confidential in there. You, you have access to it. Uh, as anybody else, and make use of it. Uh, that you, you have, if you haven't found it, to go go and, and do that. So I just wanted to say that, and uh, uh, and feel free. I, I've sent the list to you guys. I'll keep on building on it, but feel free if there is any issue or any problem. Uh, uh, write a e drop a email to me or thing, and I will make sure that I make the connection or or find you additional material or whatever it is. Because the purpose of this uh, of this uh, internship, as far as, is basically one is to build your own collection on Merlot, so that you can show to people what you've done in this thing, and you can share it with other people in the world, and thing. The other is to develop your own knowledge, so that as you go forward for higher education, you have, a, uh, you know. Um, you you have a knowledge of the field, and you know when you and I, I can tell you I can. With great confidence, I can tell you that when you apply and you you are able to describe and say, okay, you did this, uh, you know, you know the INIH grant process, you have done this, the description, and here on Merlot, the, you have assembled some of these material that will get you a higher entry score for the higher, for the university, and because that is a skill set they all are looking for. That whether you can and the professors. Which selecting, especially in the academic medical invest, uh, centers, they're looking around, okay, who is going to come and help them in finding some more grants or finding a research paper or doing li literature review. So that is a qualification they all are looking for, you know. So that is something would be useful to, uh, to you. So, okay, so I'm sorry I could not do it the, the way I wanted to do it, to click on it and show it to you. But I think if you go into it and search on that, and you'll find a lot more material. I mean, you know, that... Uh, uh, the, you know, I've only just hurriedly put something together, but every time I go into it, I find something new, you know, and uh, so search for it. And and I would love to, uh, I mean, I would love to I look at your Merlot pages and I'd love to learn a little what you found that I didn't know. I mean, and there's a lot and thing. And there are, you'll find a lot of videos, a lot of explanatory text. A uh, lot of reports that is useful. If you look at any particular disease that you're talking about, you'll find a lot of uh, uh, what you call guidelines and uh, things. Uh, thing. So there is a lot of, if you are interested in life sciences, NIH websites is one of the most valuable resources that you want, you want to touch. And if you have any issues, uh, unfortunately, I'm sorry, this uh, that NI Library, National Library of Medicine, is not open. Otherwise, you could have just got go walked up and sat and used it, you know, work there. But reach out to the the library person you come across uh, and say, okay, I want to, you know, where can I meet you or where can I get this material? And they are most welcoming. I mean, I found that they are. I mean, you don't have to be NIH or any authority just because you're interested. They are very interested in working with you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh. All right. Thank, thank you, Anil. And and folks, what 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 I'm gonna do is here. Let me share screen real quick. Um, to to do two things. One, um, so this is the website put together, and just uh, recently I added on. Here are um, you know the schedule for that we have, and then here is the. Um, the PowerPoints, the recording from last time, and I'll add the recording here. And then I'll also add Anil's list of the NIH websites here, okay? 
So, so those are things. And, and, and as we continue with this internship, I'll just keep on adding materials here. The other thing um, we have here too, um, and uh, it was in the description early on, um, but um, one of the things that's really useful as a group is, um, is if you share your reflections, what you're learning, accomplishments, et cetera, um, in a shared, this is a, a Google Doc. So, you know, what you do is, you know, so you might go here and just say, oh, it's George uh, Churchill. And, uh, and you know, this week, you know, I learned about the um, uh, NIH um, directory of researchers. And, uh, and now, uh, you know, I'm going to look for someone who uh, is doing re research at an institution I'm thinking about applying to. And um, and I looked at and he's got grants and blah 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 right so 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 these are um, and and each of you sharing how you're thinking about it then you get to learn from one another many of you have a a shared goal in various ways or there's similar interest so learning from one another is part of what it means to be in an open community um, just as um, Anil showed the the NED dot uh, nih.gov site of the this enterprise level of directory of people open for you to reach out to and and so you can learn from them and you can learn from each other and you know i'm not asking you to write a you know a master's thesis on what you're learning each week you know minimum four to five sentences just to reflect on that so so that that should be pretty quick and easy to do um, and, uh, the other thing is, um, what I'm going to show you pretty quick here is, uh, um, uh, as, as Anil said, one of the things you can do in Merlot is create your own, um, we call it a bookmark collection. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give an example real quick. Um, let's say I want to, um, I'll do DNA again. It's, it's only three letters, so I can do that quick. All right. So what what you can do in Merlot is here's a bunch of materials, and uh, and you might say, oh, uh, I like this material, and um, and I want to add it to my uh, my summer rise collection, right? And so what what you can do is on any material within Merlot, you can say, I want to bookmark this, right? So I click on this. And, and I, I have a bunch of bookmark collections already. And, but I say, you know what? I want to create a new one. And what I want to do is I want to call it my, um, my title is going to be my uh, Summer Rise Internship Collection. You could call it whatever you want. And, and you can say uh, materials, blah, 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 whatever it might be, All right? So then I create the collection and add to it and oop, now it's creating like a, a digital shelf for just your, your stuff, okay? And now I, and just so you know, I might say, okay, now I wanna add other stuff to that collection and I might wanna see what other libraries have, right? And I, and I can go, oh, let me see some other stuff. Maybe I can find something um, at, um, I don't know, uh, Digital Commons Network. I'm just picking something out here. And, oh, look at this, Genetics Open Access article. And then I can go over here, more information. And I can add this to Merlot, contribute it, and I can add it to my bookmark collection, right? And since I just created mine, let's see, uh, what did I, what the heck did I call it? Um, was it summer? Shoot. Oh, here we go. So I could add it to my summarize internship collection 
and bingo, it's just added to it. And now, if I want to, again, just showing you, again, zipping through this, is I can go to uh, my bookmark collections. And here we go. Here are the two materials that I organize. So this is where you can create your own kind of e-portfolio of resources that you're using to learn about biomedical research or whatever it is, okay? So is that helpful, folks? Just can you see how easy it is to build your own collection? And then this is something that you will walk away with after the internship is 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 over that you can add to your any application that, that you here's concrete things that you've created within um within your internship showing your research and you can say here's what i learned about grants here's what i learned about networks of researchers etc all right all right let's just well i know we're two minutes over any final comments you want to make alice did you learn something today yeah there was like a lot more websites from nih than i thought i thought it was just medical papers and stuff everything also, I, have, I have a question regarding the research in the collection we were going to make on uh, merlot uh -huh. are we supposed to collect uh information based on our interests that we found on a like we wrote a paragraph of our initial interest uh -huh. from Open Health Systems Laboratory. Are we supposed to research on those or just anything? Well, yeah, you know, now that you're learning more, I think just, again, choose a topic area that you are really interested in. You know, you looked at stuff early on and now you say, oh, you know what? Maybe I want to look at something like this. Whatever it is, um, this is where... Um, you want to just be specific around around what that area is. You don't want to kind of search for everything all over the place, right? So so choose the topic that's important to you. And then, you know, what you can say, for example, on the, on the Google Doc I showed you, you can say, oh, I decided that I want to look at pediatric cancer um, because this is really important and I want to, I'm interested in this, blah, 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 right? And so now you're sharing how you're changing your interest area. And then you'd say, and I want to look at this from the perspective of um, someone who wants to educate people about um, uh, pediatric cancer. So, you know, you might want to be an educator versus a researcher, right? So, so there's lots of, you know, possibilities. And over time, you are going to change what you're interested in. It's called learning, right? So that's okay. That's what you're here to do. Okay, thank you. Are you all set? Okay. Lydia, how about you? You're all set? Oh, you're still muted. Um. Yes, I'm all good. Thank you. All right. And did you learn something good today? Um. Kind of the same as Alice. I really didn't know the wide range of resources available through NIH. Um, I also didn't know how um, like transparent they were about the grants and funds that they give. Um, so I found that really interesting um, that it's cataloged and available to the public. And I found that interesting. Yeah, good, good. Alexander, how about you? Oh, yes, of course. I appreciated your small little rundown on how to add resources. That was pretty nice, of course, as always. But um, just like, you know, Alice and Lydia said, uh, there's a lot of resources that I think I'm going to have to go and maybe research a little bit more later, look into them, just as Dr. Srivastava said, suggested, you know, there's a lot of stuff that, of course, I didn't even know before, like the importance of grants that, um, what is it, the uh, National Library of Medicine that researching, uh, the, uh, you can look up things or something. I'm going to have to look at it more later, but yeah, it was very interesting overall. Thank you. Right. And, and now, you know, you're thinking about, oh, what, how am I going to spend my 50 hours? This is that stuff. That time is going to fly by with all the stuff that's available 
just within the NIH collection. And then when you start looking, there's a whole lot more out there too. There's lots of other institutions and there's, and each within NIH, you have, what, what was it, you know, 30 centers, right? Within specialty, you know, it's, it's a huge treasure. All right, George, any, any last comments here? Well, I, I knew that there were a lot of resources, but the only ones that I had really looked into before were the National Library of Medicine. But now I know about all the other resources, like the grants resource, and I think that's really useful. Yeah, and 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 it, particularly, I remember you talking about you know wanting to go and research. So research is about collaboration and about getting money from grants, right? So the earlier you become familiar with these things, the earlier you're gonna be prepared to be successful in those areas. And um, and it takes a while, just so you know, these are all kind of complicated systems. So the earlier you get started, the better off you're gonna be. So I'm glad that was useful there. Uh, Maggie? I any, think any like key things you learned? I think like everyone else, like that, like NIH provided so many resources. And then also I never knew they had like a directory. Right. And, and one of the tasks that we have for your internship is for you to reach out to a professional in the field in the area you're interested in and make a connection with them, right? And so you have the NED dot, you know, NIH.gov directory. There's the Merlot directory. You got lots of choices of who you want to connect to there. And and have some fun. All right. Um, uh, Naomi, how about you? Um, just the abundance of resources that the NIH provides that was really valuable. Great. And and anything in particular that you're gonna look into now? Um, I'm gonna look at the directory definitely and find people that are aligned with my interests. Good, very good. And and finally, Oli, how about you? Oh, I just really liked how we were able to find stuff that we were able to do for the 50 hours, like finding or learning how to find a professor and stuff through the directory and how to really like expand our, our knowledge of NIH and the websites that are inside of it. Great. And you know, and I, I, again, I'll, I'll say um, all these are developing your digital literacy skills. How do you find people? How do you find grants? How do you find research? This is going to be a core foundation for anything you want to do in the future related to your education, because it's not just who's in the building with you anymore. It's who in the world right are doing these things and anybody remember carmen san diego anybody ever was that a show early on where in the world is carmen san diego no all right well so just think where in the world are the researchers for cancer they're all over the place right and they're just not next door so hopefully you're, you're getting a sense um and and the earlier you think about this the better prepared you're gonna be in for your future, all right? I know we went long today, so you can add 10 more minutes to your time to count up for your, all your hours if you'd like, okay? And uh, otherwise, um, you're gonna get, I think it's uh, on Friday um, is the next one. And um, uh, and uh, and I, I think Cushy or someone else is gonna be, um, presenting there. I, I won't be on that one there for you. But if you have any questions, okay, folks, you can just email me. All right. Have a good rest of the week. And thanks for joining today. Thank Bye -bye. you. Have a great day. Um, I sent an, a chat message to Kushi. I was asking about um, an internship document that she sent to me. Uh huh. I'm not sure she was able to see it. Um, but I was just wondering, like, if I was supposed to fill out the entire document, because there's like a feed. Yeah, I have shared with you the uh, the complete form 
about OHSL document, OHSL information, and my signature. You need to fill out the information which is required from your side, I think. Just check the recent email. Mm -hmm. I have emailed you the document with OHSL information and my signatures. Okay. Um, it, on Friday, you sent me like another document. Um, yeah. You in sent me two documents, I think. Everyone is sending me two documents. And I thought that the first one was the correct document. So I just signed that document. Now I have completed this one also. Okay. I was just a bit confused about the performance evaluation because um, there's like um, a rating section that needs to be filled out. And I don't know if like I need to do that or. Oh, no. um, yeah, we, we'll do that. Okay, so I just sign it at the bottom. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Because yeah, the performance evaluation is after you perform, right? So it's it'll be at the end. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right, take care, everyone. Thank you.